Hey, 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 hey. My child, what did I tell you about boys? All they want is sex. And if you have sex, what's going to happen? You're going to fall pregnant. And when you fall pregnant when you're such a young girl, your life is over. It's over. No boys allowed. No boys allowed. I'm gonna try, gonna try, gonna try. Work till I die, till I die, till I die. I'm gonna fail and get up, cause I'm not giving up on my dream. Hey gorgeous and welcome to my channel. I'm Kopara Shimage and this is how I do things. A show where you send me your questions and I'll let you know how I would do things and I can take it as entertainment, use it as advice, take it, don't take it, use it. Don't get it, don't use it, don't do whatever you want with it. Do you know why? You know why? Because in that me, act, I'm not a professional. I'm not a professional whatsoever. I'm just letting you know what I would do if I was in your shoes. I've received this question so many times. Okay, so I understand that I'm also working through this. And I think that having a channel like How I Do Things has really helped me to talk about sex in a more positive way and to also reframe my own thinking about it. And the reason why we're having this conversation is because many of you have DM'd me to say that, you know what, listening to you is helping me reframe that thinking that, that growing up as sex is a taboo, as something that we should not do, something that was bad culturally and religiously and in our communities. And now reframing it in my mind, especially now that, you know, I'm in a committed relationship and helping me to reframe it in my relationship and i thank you for those questions because it also helps me as well so the three points i have about getting over the sexual taboo i'm still working through them and maybe in a year's time i might just change my opinion but i hope that this is a conversation starter for many of us so comment down below about your thoughts your background because what i've realized is that it's not just an african thing it's not just a black thing it's not just a christian thing this happens all over the world and it happens across every single race and it happens in individual homes as well and it continues to happen today and as we have that that set that sex is bad we're going to hell and the next thing you get into a committed relationship you get married and then it's just like sex is a good thing it's kind of like it stuffs with your brain so how do we deal with it number one is to acknowledge the taboo and that sounds weird it's just like it shouldn't be a taboo what do you mean acknowledge that these conversations happened in your past i think shoving them away in some back part of our brains is part of the reason why subconsciously we still think sex is a bad thing so it it creates this barrier for us to have good sex with our husbands because we're not acknowledging that my past and in growing up you know i was told not to have sex it was bad for you you're gonna fall pregnant if you fall pregnant then your career is over your life is over and sex is bad for you and boys are bad for you and all of those things where we didn't actually even talk about sex with our mothers and if we did we got into trouble um or just that our mothers were uncomfortable about the situation because we also have to understand how our mothers were also raised and what they were brought up with and what they understood about sex and also understand the fear that they had I think I think about my daughter and I think about how am I what am I gonna do how am I gonna talk about sex in such a way that I don't make it look as if it is this horrible horrible thing and kind of damage her according to sex but at the same time I you know I don't want her to indulge in it too quickly and indulge in it in such a way that it leads to her being you know creating sexual ties with people she doesn't want to or having sexual encounters she regrets or not valuing sex for what it really is because there is a devaluing of it because it's such a beautiful and amazing thing that maybe our parents actually made us fear it so that we wouldn't have it too early and misunderstand it so that when we're older we've got a better brain to understand it better we haven't damaged ourselves by sleeping with the wrong people we haven't damaged ourselves by having this negative perspective on it when it's actually a good thing. So they thought, let's make sure that they're scared of it so that when they are married, they have a better perspective on it. I can understand the tough position that our mothers were in and the communities that we were in were, were from in that it became a taboo because they were just scared of what would happen if there was too much sexual freedom. Um, and it's that fear they had and they put that fear in us so acknowledge it's in your past acknowledge it was there acknowledge that the conversations happened 
and that you have to acknowledge that you have to change it. I think that's a good starting point. Instead of just denying, 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 because pushing it away, it's gonna come out somehow. It was part of that past and it's shaped the way that you think about sex now and take an active perspective to actually changing that perspective moving forward. Number two is that we should have conversations about sex. If you're not having them, start having them with your sisters, with your aunts, with your mothers. I'm fortunate to come from a family where my aunts love talking about sex. Love it. So my mother, my, her sisters, and they love talking about sex. And it's, it's something that they love talking about having sex with your husband. You know what I mean? And it's weird that when you're younger, the conversation's not the same. It's a bit weird. It is a bit taboo, but when you get married, it changes. But if you are in an environment where you don't talk about it, start to have the conversation. And the conversation can start with, you know, mama, the way I was raised makes me scared of having sex, you know, and just start having the conversation because the thing that continues to make sex a taboo is the fact that the conversation has not been had. And maybe how I do things helps with that. And I hope it does. And it's a conversation starter. Maybe you can watch this with your mom. That you know what? Growing up, I was told that sex is a bad thing. And now that I'm married, I'm a bit shell shocked and I don't know what to do with myself. And now I have this bad image about it and I don't know how to how to enjoy it. I don't know how to approach it because I still have this thing in the back of my head that I'm gonna die and burn in hell. <laughs> So the point is to just to start having that conversation and to know where some of the things, some of the opinions, some of the ways that we think about sex comes from trauma, comes from taboo, comes from fear and start to reposition it and to understand the conversation where sex is a good thing. And this just leads me to point number three. Sex is a good thing. The Bible talks about sex being a good thing. And when I talk about the value of it and what I learned in my personal experience is that when I did not understand it, I did not see the value in it the way that I see it now. And that is with a person who has made that commitment with me. The thing about marriage that has changed my perspective about sex is that marriage is a covenant. Covenant means that it is an outward expression of an inward commitment. So when you're in a relationship with, per with a person, it's an inward co uh, commitment. But when you get married to a person, that person makes that commitment public. They do something physical, something outside, something that is monumental, that stands as a physical thing for what is happening inwardly. And what that commitment did is it created an, another level of safety and another level of vulnerability that allowed sex to take a completely different shape to what it used to be when it was just with randoms. And it gave it a deeper meaning. And sex went from being a physical thing to being a spiritual thing. Because sex is spiritual. God created sex. The Holy Spirit can guide you through your sexual experiences. And when we're younger and we talk about sex being a bad thing, we think that God looks at us and frowns when we have sex. And that even carries into marriage. And we think that when we are married, God is still frowning at us when we have sex. When you read the Bible about what the Bible and what God says about sex, you realize that it is a spiritual thing. And that's where you remove boredom from sex. That's when you remove sexual positions from sex. That's when you remove all these little things that people say sex is all about. And it becomes so much more than that. And you realize that it is, our, our bodies were created for communication. And sex is a form of communication. And the reason why it is spiritual is because that sex is a physical communication of an inward feeling. And when you have that inward feeling and you use your body to, to, to communicate that and you feel it and it feels good, that's when sex reaches its pinnacle. And it's not about the position you are in. It's about the person and what you are trying to communicate with your bodies when they interact. And that's what I think. <laughs> I hope that that helps. I don't know if it does, but that's, that's, let's just say this is a conversation starter. And I hope that in some way or another, 
in our comment section, we can get to some conclusion that helps us reframe our thinking about the sexual taboo. Whether it was a cultural thing that made you feel like sex is a bad thing, or whether it is just the fact that you just never spoke about it at home, or what was said in church, or whatever it was. But let me know in the comment section down below. We've all had our own experiences and our traumas, and for all we know, my opinion on sex comes from my previous experience, experiences, the scars that I've had and the traumas that I've had. And maybe I still need to reshape it. Like I said, I'm still young in my marriage and I still need to reshape what I think about sex in marriage and outside of marriage. So let's communicate. Let's have a conversation in the comments down below. And let's see how we can get to something that is more positive about something that is so beautiful as sex intercourse making love <laughs> until later days beautiful people thank you so much for watching don't forget to comment to subscribe to my channel and to give this video a big thumbs up until later mwah. bye hey gorgeous thank you so much for watching this video and thank you for commenting and continuing this conversation way after the few minutes of this video are done please don't leave without subscribing to my channel and continue to to binge watch. Until later. Mm -hmm.